AR-15 rifles, they look scary. They look like a machine gun. They're not a machine gun. They're nothing like a machine gun. They're actually much more like the Glock that you pull out of your you know, side pocket and shoot. Um, it's a semi-automatic rifle. That's my understanding. Uh, Stephen, you're the expert, but more and more there's a focus on these these weapons in particular, trying to ban them. Um, we talked earlier about how there's about 400 million plus weapons in the United States. Uh, I read that there are uh, it's 434 million guns in the United States, according to the Trade Association for U.S. Firearm and Industry. They estimate 20 million of those are ARs, some sort of AR weapon. So your thoughts on whether that gun is getting a bad rap. Yeah, I mean, there's there's certainly a lot to talk about with the AR. I think, uh, for one, it's the most popular rifle in, in the country, uh, which is probably why it occasionally will turn up in some of these high-profile shootings, because, uh, I mean, it's just it's so ubiquitous. Um, there's one literally over my shoulder here for those watching on YouTube. Um, but it, it's, it, it is a uh, derivative of the military rifle you know similar platform but as you alluded to a different firing mechanism inside of it that only allows for semi-automatic fire which is one round per pull of the trigger whereas the military version is capable of fully automatic fire which is continuous fire when you pull the trigger until you let go uh, so that is a, one significant difference um in, in the gun's operation but otherwise it's it's you know similar design, uh, which is also probably one of the reasons why it's so popular, because you have a lot of veterans who come back and want to own the gun that they trained with, or at least the same platform. And uh, it's the same I, same reason that the 1911, the old army sidearm is extremely popular in America. You know, it was a gun designed for use in military context, and it's now probably, if not the most popular gun design in the handgun market well, certainly one of the most popular and um you know they are really not used that often in crime uh rifles as a whole which ars are just a subset of uh, are only used in about 300 murders per year according to the fbi that's out of uh, about 15,000 per year. And over the last two years, that number has actually increased quite a bit, as, as you alluded to earlier in the show. And so, you know, they get a lot of attention probably because of how they look. They look similar to the military gun. They are a similar design. But um, when you look at the data, they're clearly not drivers of the the crime epidemic in America. And and I don't think they were drivers of the murder spike we've seen over the last two years either. These aren't guns that are commonly used by criminals uh, in their activity. So that, yep. that Mike, I think, is an important distinction to make. Mike, we the saw gun. them used. Um, an AR-15 was used in the Parkland shooting in Florida and the uh, school shooting um, there Good where job. I think it, I think it was 17 and, kids were killed. 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then there are ar style ar-15 style uh, rifles because ar-15 i guess is a brand name so you you have guns that are that look just like that one was used um in aurora colorado in that movie theater mass shooting sandy hook saw. as well yeah it's sandy hook the worst i mean i mean honestly just the most unfathomable mass shooting of all time um so that that this leads people i think in great frustration including myself saying what the hell can we do what can we do um do everything. Do everything. Uh, that's that leads people to say, get rid of the AR-15s. But I, I just don't. That's not the. That's not realistically the answer. It's the same thing as a handgun, which is what was used, for example, in Virginia Tech, the most deadly mass shooting we've had um, of all time. I mean, in, or at least in recent history, uh, at a school. I mean. Uh, so you tell me whether the AR-15 is being sort of wrongly targeted or singled out. Well, I'm, I'm not. <clears throat> I think, first of all, everything Stephen said is right. And so it's worth like looking at statistics and numbers. And the point you're making is also correct too. I mean, ultimately, it's a small, it's a it's a small figure on, in a much vaster scale of gun homicide. I mean, it just the, the problem, I guess, is it has an outside presence because of where it has shown up historically, which are these like milestone mass shooting events. Um, that are really, if you think about it, they're 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 fairly akin to acts of terrorism in, in the sense that, like, it's while they're ultimately still not 
frequent, they're persistent enough that they upset the social contract, especially in places that we expect to be safe, whether that be our children's schools or the you know uh, church, um, <clears throat> a concert, the movie theater, any of the places that you're talking about. So it obviously it's it's more it's it becomes like it's a it's a it's a symbol, and and that I guess is why people are so drawn to it because it's it it, it creates an obviously visceral reaction, especially because think about the things that are tied to or the deaths children um that's i think the first thing people come to mind i think the ar first became widely recognized after sandy hook as like mm -hmm. a, as a tool of, yes. as a tool of terror but but if you were if you were actually seeking and i think that everybody is most people we are anyway to address like everyday gun violence then uh, of course like banning the ar is, is really not going to make a dent in that and that's not right. going to be the thing that's going to change the lives of people who actually live with this on a daily basis. Um, which is again, why I could come back to just, it's why it feels like uh, accountability is the most important thing. I mean, you're talking about the Michigan shooting and the fact that the, um, in the school there, that the, the parents are being prosecuted for that. That's an incredibly, as you know, an incredibly rare outcome. People who traditionally don't secure their firearms in such a way in which their children can't get a hold of them um, are not you are even even when states have laws that seek to hold people accountable for for failing to secure their firearms in such a way that minors can't get them those cases are rarely prosecuted in the first place 